A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you three dips that are made with beans and different vegetables. So they're all going to have a different flavor profile, a different color to them, and they're all going to be delicious of course. They're all great for meal prep, so you can prep them ahead of time and then use them in balance bowls, in sandwiches, as a snack with some crudités or crackers, or as a starter in the same way. Uh, the first one is going to be a red pepper dip made with roasted peppers from a jar so this is super convenient and very easy and has that yummy sweetness and tanginess from the peppers then the next one's going to be a vibrant green dip inspired by basil pesto so it's super fresh and lovely on pretty much anything and then the final one is going to be a roasted butternut squash and garlic dip which is more hearty and warming in the flavor so i hope you're excited i know i am and we're going to start with the roasted pepper dip so let's go for this dip I'm using cannellini beans because they blend really smooth and creamy and I've got a can and a half's worth that I add to the food processor and then I'm using these roasted peppers from a jar like I mentioned and I've got two here I always like some acid in my bean dip, so here I'm using the juice from half a lemon that I just squeeze into the food processor as well. Next I'm going in with two tablespoons of nutritional yeast for a bit of savory flavor and then two teaspoons of maple syrup to bring out the sweetness in the peppers. And then to spice things up I'm using half a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper flakes and one teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm also adding in one garlic clove that I peel and then chop into smaller pieces before I add them in. Finally, I season with a good pinch of salt and then I pop the lid on my food processor and just blend until smooth. You might need to stop the food processor once just to scrape down the sides, but otherwise you just keep on blending until it's nice and smooth and then you're ready to serve it. This amount of ingredients makes one and a half cups worth of dip and here I'm just serving it in a bowl and I'm sprinkling it with some extra Aleppo pepper flakes, some finely chopped parsley as well as some parsley leaves just because it looks nice and this is my tangy, a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet pepper dip. I really hope you will like it. So this is my red pepper dip and as you can see it comes together really easily like all of these and um, it's yummy on pretty much everything or with pretty much everything so just play around with it. And now we're going to move on to my vibrant green dip with basil but before we do that I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and tell you a little bit more about them. Squarespace is an all-in-one website builder which allows users to create a really beautiful and inviting space to grow their business or their projects. I've personally used Squarespace to build my food photography portfolio and what I really like about it is that it's really easy and intuitive to use. You don't need any special skills at all to build a good looking and well functioning site. They even offer themes, font combinations and color combos that really aid in the building process. Squarespace's builder has many uses as well so it's great for business owners and e-commerce as well as for creatives and bloggers. So if you're thinking about creating a website for any purpose, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash good eatings for 10% off your first website or domain. All right, so now let's make the green dip with basil and I'm also using fresh baby spinach in this to really give it that vibrant green color, but I'm going to show you it step by step. So let's get started. To start this recipe off, I'm going to toast a quarter cup of pine nuts in a dry and hot pan and then we're going to use half of this for the dip itself and then half on top of the dip. And once they're golden like this, I just transfer them into a bowl and I get ready to make the dip itself. So I'm adding one can of butter beans to my food processor, followed by a packed cup of baby spinach, as well as another packed cup of fresh basil leaves. And while the basil will give it that pesto hint, the spinach will help make it a nice vibrant green color. Then I'm adding in two tablespoons of nutritional yeast again just for a little cheesy touch and then I'm following that up with the juice from half a lemon. Next I'm going in with two raw garlic cloves. Again I just peel them and chop them into the food processor bowl. 
I add in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil that will just carry all the flavors and then I add in half of the toasted pine nuts as well. Then I finish it all off with a good pinch of salt and I blend, blend, blend until it's all nice and smooth. And just as a little reminder, always make sure to taste the dip before you transfer it out of the food processor bowl because this way you can make sure that you have the chance to season it to your liking. Now you can really see that gorgeous green color that the spinach and the basil gives this dip. And when I serve it in a bowl like this, I like to drizzle it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and then sprinkle the rest of those pine nuts over the top and then adding some nice basil leaves. It's always nice to hint about what's actually inside the dip when you're decorating it for sharing or for guests. This green dip is particularly good on salads and balanced bowls where you have a lot of fresh ingredients. It's also really yummy in sandwiches with fresh vegetables, maybe some smoked tofu, but you just play around with it. I know you can think of a bunch of great ideas to use it with too. And now let's move on to the last dip, which is the roasted butternut and garlic dip. For this, you're gonna actually need to do a little bit more work because we're gonna roast the butternut and we're actually also gonna roast the garlic, which gives it a more sweet sweet and deep flavor but of course it's actually even better if you're gonna have some butternut squash left over from the day before then it's a perfect thing to make from the leftovers and uh, enough talking let's make it First is first, and we need to peel and chop up a piece of butternut squash. I'm using one cup's worth of roasted butternut, but it's always good to roast a little bit extra. You can use it for dinner or lunch the next day or whatever you want, of course. I like to use a knife to peel mine, and then I just chop it into chunks that I can easily roast in the oven. I transfer the chunks to a lined baking dish and I drizzle it with one tablespoon of olive oil and I season it with salt before tossing it to coat, spreading it out on that baking tray. And then I'm going to prepare the garlic for roasting. And for this I'm cutting off the top of the bulb like this so I expose the cloves. And then I place it on top of some aluminum foil and I drizzle a little bit of olive oil onto it. I spread that out and then I close up the foil just so that it's nice and snug in there. I put it on the tray and then this is ready to roast at 200 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. Once the butternut is roasted and has cooled a little bit, I add one cup worth of it to the food processor. And here you can see the garlic when it's roasted. It's really soft and I squeeze out about five cloves into the dip. It sounds a lot, but when you roasted it like this, it has a much more mellow flavor. Then I'm adding in one can of cannellini beans again for that creamy dip. And I'm going in with two tablespoons of tahini. I'm also pouring in one teaspoon of maple syrup just to bring out the sweetness in the butternut. And then again, I'm going in with the juice from half a lemon just to brighten everything up. By now you probably guessed it, but I'm also adding in two tablespoons of nutritional yeast here. I just like how it adds that savory round flavor to the dip. Then to spice things up, I'm using half a teaspoon of ground coriander, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and half a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper flakes. I season it all with salt and then I blend until smooth again. This dip really has a warming and spicy flavor along with the sweetness from the butternut. If you're not really into sweetness in savory dishes, I would leave the maple syrup and the cinnamon out. It will still be really delicious and just have a more savory flavor. Once it's all blended smooth like this, it's ready to serve up and I love the golden orangey hue that this dip gets and I like to top this again with some more Aleppo pepper flakes or you could just use regular chili flakes and I also like to use some pumpkin seeds and then some sort of herb here I've got some fresh thyme so I'm just grabbing some leaves to sprinkle over for some nice visual interest So these 
are my three veggie bean dips. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make them and that you will find them useful. Like I said, they're great for meal prepping, for keeping in the fridge and whipping out whenever you want something creamy to accompany pretty much any meal or a starter or a snack. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.